Hi, welcome back. This is Brian Keller, Technical Evangelist for Visual Studio. And so in the previous videos, you may have seen how some of the tools within Microsoft Test Manager, Lab Management, and within Visual Studio allow you to author and run manual tests and even fully automate coded UI tests and then put those into a lab management build deploy test workflow. Now, behind the scenes, you may have noticed that a lot of the capabilities actually uh, rely on Team Foundation Server as the heart of storing all of these uh, test cases and the test runs and all the information uh, that, that goes on with respect to your lab managed environments. And there's a very good reason that we did that, and that is so that you can start to take advantage of the rich reports that are available within Team Foundation Server to start to track that quality over time. And in this video, I'm just going to show you a few of those reports that you can use uh, to help make sure that your projects are on the right track and to make sure that you're continuing to drive up that software quality uh, that we all expect in great software applications. And so I like to always refer back to this gentleman, Lord Kelvin. And Lord Kelvin said that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And I think that's really insightful because until you actually have a good sense for what's going on within your projects, it's hard to know what the effects of different management techniques or reallocating individual resources or using different techniques to try to improve that quality are going to have on the overall result of your application's end result. And so within Team Foundation Server, we can start to give you reports that show you this type of view. This is a, a report that I call the Steven Sanofsky Report. The reason I call it the Steven Sanofsky Report is that Steven Sanofsky, you may know him as the person who's driving the Windows engineering effort for Windows 8. He also helped ship Windows 7 and earlier versions of Office as well. And they actually started using Team Foundation Server to track all of the work items that might be requirements and other individual artifacts to make sure that they're really driving on everything that they set out to deliver in that particular release. And so, of course, in this dashboard, I'm looking at some fictitious data. But the really nice thing about this dashboard from a management perspective is that someone like Steven Sanofsky could look at this and say, you know, as a new customer, I want to order a meal. Maybe that's a really important feature that he wants to make sure that he's tracking within the application. As he starts to scroll left to right, that individual requirement can start to show you how much of the work has been done by developers. So here, we're rolling up all the individual tasks the development team is going out and implementing. And so he might feel pretty good about this feature being 80% done, but then if he looks at an additional perspective, he can see, well, do we have any test cases that are written? How are those particular tests being run? Are they being automated or are they still manual? Are they passing or failing? Or maybe they're inconclusive because they haven't been run in a while. And so here you can see that the second feature here actually has zero tests written against it. So even though it's 79% you know, done, he's probably going to start to ask questions of the QA team to start to understand why there haven't been any tests run against it. So that's one of those really nice top-down views into how a particular project is progressing from requirement to implementation to the test plan as well. Another set of reports here shows you how many bugs you have. So this report can show you at a glance whether or not your bug count is increasing, whether or not the bugs that are coming from your test organization are being addressed by the developers and moving through an active, resolved, closed state. Another report here shows you things like code coverage and code churn. So ideally, as you start to get towards the end of an iteration, maybe you're going to ship a beta, or maybe you're going to ship the final software to your customer, you should start to see things like code churn go down, meaning that developers are starting to stabilize and starting to check in less code. If you start to see a spike like this, it could indicate that developers were frantic maybe the weekend before release and checking in a lot of code, which can potentially lead to a lot of regressions as well. So this could be a warning sign that you have a lot of new code that hasn't yet been tested. And so that's something for you to drill into and understand. Code coverage, of course, allows you to see how much of the underlying application is being executed by your automated tests. And that can be one metric to help you understand whether or not you need to invest in more automated tests that can raise the amount of code that's being tested with those automated tests. 
This is one of my favorite dashboards because you can actually start to see the importance of multiple perspectives as a result of having all the data stored within Team Foundation Server. Let's focus on the task burn down chart first. If this is the only chart that I'm basing my success on, then I'm going to feel pretty good about my project because you can see that the ideal trend is pretty much what my team is delivering on. So I would feel that my application is being delivered on time and that my customer is going to be happy. However, if you look at this other perspective down here, which is the user story progress, you'll notice that we're not actually closing out any user stories. And so what that tells me is that the development team might be spending a little bit of their time working on one feature, then jumping to another feature, then jumping to another feature. And instead, this is a really great opportunity in real time to ask them to make sure that they really complete one piece of functionality before moving to the next. And by doing that, they're going to allow the test team to spend their time testing that end-to-end -end functionality so that they're not surprised the Friday before the Monday that this goes to a customer with a lot of new functionality that they haven't had a chance to test with yet. And there's a lot of graphs in here. So here you can see you know, the top list of tasks and bugs. And we have a new team web access portal in TFS 2012 that makes it really easy to see your backlog and be able to expose that to your customers as well. So you may have seen that in the developer track, which is a part of the Visual Studio 2012 launch. Here's some others as well. So this shows, you know, do we have bug reactivations? A bug reactivation is really interesting because it means that you assigned a bug to a developer. They said that they fixed it by checking some code back in, but then the tester actually found the same bug again, and that bug is reactive. So it could mean that maybe the developer didn't understand the bug, or maybe they're not necessarily testing it in the same environments that the test team is testing that bug in. There's a number of factors that could be impacting this, but by having these reports, it gives you those clues to help you drill in and understand what might be happening. So that's just a look at a few of the reports and a few of the ways in which Team Foundation Server in conjunction with all the different products that make up Visual Studio 2012 can not only help you deliver high quality applications, but can really give you those tools at your fingertips so that you can track that quality on in real time and make sure that you're on track uh, to meet the expectations of your customers.